Hi, I'm Nikolai, aka 56 Miner, and today we're unboxing our January Premium Box. This month's box is all about watercolor powder, a unique and personal medium that has a lot of opportunities. We'll go over how to use it and talk about abstract floral illustration. I'll also share some tips and tricks that I picked up when working with this really unique medium. Let's get into it. For our surface this month, we have a custom Portofino pad from the Magnani 1404, which is perfect for mixed media work. This month's box includes a four set of custom Sketchbox signature watercolor powders in turquoise, grape, orange, and navy. Now, because we're working with a pigment-based medium, I do suggest putting down some newsprint or extra paper on a surface you're working on just to protect it so you don't end up staining anything. To apply our watercolor powder, we have a Sketchbox signature filbert brush in a size 4. Taking our wet brush and a little bit of that pigment powder, we can see that the filbert offers some consistent lines and we can get really thin or thick marks depending on how we hold it. We can also affect our line quality by the amount of pressure that we use when holding the brush. By being conscious of that pressure that we're exuding, we can create simple leaves just with a single stroke. Try practicing this this month in order to get more comfortable exuding that pressure. It's really easy to overwork watercolor. So this month, try reducing how many brush strokes you use and allow for more white space. This allows you to create a really fun, abstract floral. And I've always enjoyed watercolors more when I'm using them in a looser, more abstract way. Taking a bit of our orange and mixing it with that navy, we can get a really vibrant green. Because we're working with pure pigment, there's a lot of color combinations in this month's box. And here's a good example of overworking watercolor. I'm using too many strokes and the pigment's not really working with me. However, if I go in and just use that pressure technique that we did before, I can create some simple abstract leaves that better complement our watercolor. And once our paper's dry, we can go back in and layer that pigment for darker areas. These darker areas give us a better sense of three-dimensional form, but I want to make sure that I'm still leaving that white space because that's adding a lot to the structure as well. Because we're working with pure pigment, we can get some really beautiful gradients out of it just by adding more water. Here I'm going to build out a couple flowers just utilizing the negative space in order to give it structure. Here I'm just focusing on the shape of those petals, allowing the pigment to pull and create those gradients naturally. You can use this technique to represent really anything. However, if you are interested in floral illustration specifically, I'd suggest checking out our September video where we do a deep dive in drawing flowers. Because drawing and painting, while there is overlap, there's a separate skill set to each art form. And those single stroke leaves are a great element to add if you need to fill in some space around your flowers. For multi-petaled flowers like a peony, I like to start by defining the stigma with some dots in the center and then use that to build out the petals on the outside. Just like with our turquoise rose, we're going to make sure to leave that white space between our strokes. This will allow us to create a little bit more structure. I'm also diluting the pigment on my brush as I work my way out, creating a much more subtle watercolor effect. I'm trying to be very light-handed with my strokes to not overwork that pigment, as well as working in a circular pattern so that we can create the illusion of form. With that first layer fully dry, I'll go back in and darken up some areas with that grape pigment just because I love the color, and add some leaves around that blossom. You can create a lot of really beautiful secondary and tertiary colors with these watercolor pigments, so don't feel that you need to work with them just straight out of the bottle. The next item in this month's box is going to be a tube of transparent titanium white watercolor from the Rembrandt Company. By mixing the titanium white with our pigment, we can create more of a traditional watercolor. It adds a little bit of body and allows us to layer our pigments a little bit easier. Because the titanium white is adding some body to our pigment, we're going to get more consistent colors and less of those gradients that we saw before. So you might need to mix a few values or layer colors in order to achieve a good range of values. 
The titanium white also gives us a bit more control when creating shapes with the watercolor pigment. So it's a lot easier to build those flowers than it is with just mixing the powder with some water. The titanium white is also going to reduce your dry time a little bit, so it makes it easier to go back in and layer that watercolor pigment. Our turquoise watercolor powder is going to have a little bit more of a green tint to it, so I'll use that to add some leaves, embellish the center of some flowers, or increase the shadow range in some of the blossoms. Sometimes adding that secondary color can really elevate a piece, though I do love monochromatic work. The important part is just to take your time and to have fun exploring the medium. Our next watercolor powder is going to be a custom color from the TCW Color Sparks in Bougainvillea, which is a vibrant, saturated pink color. To swatch this out, I've added a little bit of that Rembrandt Titanium White to my water, so I have that binder and that body already set on my brush. And because that titanium white's already mixed in with my water, I can go in and place a layer of it on my pad. That way, when I add some pigment directly to the canvas, it'll allow me to kind of interact with that pigment a little bit more and push that color around. This is a great technique if you want to achieve some soft transitions or gradients in your artwork this month. Here I'll demonstrate by creating a quick gradient of a sunset. Because I've already placed a layer of that titanium white and water on the canvas first, I can go in and mix those pigments directly on our surface. Try using the bougainvillea color with the navy and the grape in order to create a nighttime scene. I'm pretty happy with the colors of my sunset, so let's bring back that turquoise powder and add a ocean to our scene. Here I'm implementing the same technique that we saw in our abstract floral allowing the white space to kind of speak to the waves and give this a little bit more form and perspective. Working wet on wet will allow you to create softer transitions and letting the layers dry will give you more stark values. The final item in this month's box is going to be a Copic Fineliner in Lavender. Fineliners will give us a consistent line and are great for techniques like pointillism, hatching, or cross-hatching, which is when you overlap lines in order to create value. It's a fun technique, but just like with pointillism, it can take some time. Fine liners are great if you're looking for more of a minimalistic look, something that's a little bit more drawn versus painted. Plant life such as lavender or baby's breath is a great opportunity to do some dot work. Starting with our stems, we can create a simple, minimalist floral illustration. Not really worried about realism here, just getting the idea that these are flowers across. And to make things a little bit more graphic, I'll add a ribbon at the bottom, which we can use as a label. Taking some of that diluted grape pigment, we can go in and add some loose color, reserving that darker grape for the leaves and filling in that ribbon color. Once it's dry, we can go back in with our fine liner, which really is what's so fun about the fine liner. We can layer underneath or on top and do a lot with it. Now that we have a good understanding of our materials, let's do something a little bit more polished. For this, I'm going to use the cone or pencil from our November box, but you can really use anything as long as it's erasable. I'll start by identifying the center of the flowers and creating some guides for my petals. If you need help with drawing flowers, make sure to check out that September video where we do a deep dive on how to illustrate florals. Here I'm just subdividing that circle guide that I set up into petals so that everything kind of stays in line. Once I'm happy with my sketch, I'll go in with our fine liner and finalize those lines. This is where you can make changes or adjust anything as you see fit. Don't feel beholden to that initial sketch because you might have a better idea. And nothing is final until it's inked. With my first pass complete, I'll go in and erase those pencil lines once I'm sure that that fine liner is dry and go back in and thicken up some lines. This will help to differentiate the petals from the stem and so forth. To create some dimensionality in our flowers, I'll go in and add some lines to the petals. 
working from the inside out to create kind of a bend to our petal shape. Earlier in the video, we focused more on a painterly depiction of flowers, and here we're doing more of a drawing depiction. As we're relying heavily on the line to depict our flower, whereas before we were focusing on brush strokes and color. By adding more details to the tips of the flower, the stigma, and coloring that center, we can create a more realistic depiction. With our drawing complete, we can start to go in with those watercolor powders. I'm going to start by laying down a layer of that titanium white and water so I can blend my pigments directly on the canvas, and then go in with our orange. I'll sprinkle some of our Bougainvillea color onto the canvas because I don't want a smooth transition. I kind of want some texture. I'll add a little bit more of that Bougainvillea color to our center, and then using my brush tip, I'm actually going to flick the bristles in order to create more of a splatter effect, kind of like spray paint. For our stems, I'll mix some of that turquoise color with our orange to get that nice green. And I'll layer the turquoise directly on the center of our flowers to recreate more of a black. It's gonna be a rich black as that blue is interacting with the pink and the orange, making it a much darker color. And with that, our piece is complete. Hope you enjoyed the video, learned a few things, and if you post your work online, make sure you use the hashtag SketchboxJanuary. We'll love seeing what y'all create each month. And if you want to learn more about drawing florals, make sure to head over to our YouTube channel where you can check out those September videos and like and subscribe. And I'll see you next month.